Little Red Riding Hood by Liz Doolittle. Once there lived a child so pretty, she was also sweet and witty. Her mother made a cape so red, along with a hood to fit on her head. Little Red's mom made some fresh bread. Go take these to your ill granny, she said. Little Red's granny lived a few miles down, near an old mill at the edge of town. A wolf came by as she continued to walk. She didn't know it was dangerous to talk. The wolf seemed friendly and nice. She didn't see the evil in his eyes. Where are you off to, little child? Why are you alone in the wild? You walk through this path alone, with the vines and bushes overgrown. Oh, I'm off to see my granny who is sick. I took this path because it's quick. I have fresh bread for her to eat. It's still a bit hot and just a bit sweet. The wolf was hungry, hungry for days, and he had his wicked ways. He said farewell and raced for the place to eat a child. He had lots of space. The wolf saw that Granny wasn't there, and it was time to lay his plans bare. Red came knocking on the door. Granny, are you better than before? Come in, child. Granny misses you so. Come closer, for I can't stand, you know. Granny, why do you sound hoarse? I'm still feeling ill, of course. I've brought you something to eat. This will be a good treat. Mother baked some bread just for you to help you cope with your flu. The bad wolf had worn Granny's dress. Could Little Red Riding Hood have a guess? Red inched closer for a better look, and one glance was all it took. Granny, what big ears you've got. How could it have changed a lot? All the better to hear you, Red. Now come closer to my bed. Granny, how big your eyes are too. Red's curiosity grew and grew. All the better to see you, Red. Now come closer so I can kiss your head. But Granny, your arms are big and your hair looks like a funny wig. So changed and sharp are your teeth, it feels like you're different underneath. And so you're right, little Red. The wolf then sprang from the bed. Red gasped and tried to run. She looked for help, but there was none. A hunter came with a large knife, just in time to save Red's life. He grabbed the wolf before it could bite and cut off its head with all his might. The wicked wolf was now dead, and in town the word had spread. Red was the safest she could be, and with kisses from mother and granny. The end. The moral of the story is don't trust strangers right away. While not everyone will have bad intentions, it is best to stay safe and be with people you know best. If you liked the story, give it a thumbs up below. And if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.